Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley, and today I'm going to talk to you about violations of probation, specifically in DUI cases. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just had a DUI case on a violation of probation, and I like to talk about things off the cuff. So, one of the things that I do, and I can't speak for other criminal defense attorneys, I can tell you what I do. When I have an older VOP, whether it's a DUI or not, and there are conditions that have not been met, maybe there's drug and alcohol class or an evaluation or some sort of treatment or like in DUIs, ignition interlock or, um, or a boot on the vehicle, uh, victim impact panel class, um, tu not tuition, um, probation costs. All of these things that need to be paid, there could be restitution, there could be fines, right? There, there, there's a lot of things that are usually required, especially in a DUI case. Well, what do you do when your client doesn't do any of those things and some time has gone by and there's a warrant for their arrest and they can't renew their driver's license or they can't get an ignition interlock placed on the car because they have a suspended license so they you know they don't they don't they don't have a vehicle registration right there there's other obstacles there's collateral consequences so what i normally do is i contact probation I speak to probation, I, I confirm what the violation of probation is, the affidavit of what things they're missing. I usually work out a semi-resolution because what I work out with probation is not guaranteed that the state's going to agree to it. But what I do is I say, okay, I'm gonna get you all of these things. The warrant's still out, my client's got a warrant, right? And these are older cases. So I have my client do as much as they can. If they have community service hours, they do them. If they have a, a, a immobilization, a boot on the car, I tell them to get the boot on the car. If they haven't done their victim impact, I make sure they do it. If they haven't done their DUI school, I make sure they do it. If they haven't done the evaluation and follow-up treatment, I make sure they do it. Whatever the conditions are, we get those done and we get them to probation while the warrant's still out. Now keep in mind, the person can be picked up, right, at any time. But if we can get those things into probation, probation will then amend their violation to say these things have been completed. And then it makes it easier for me, the defense attorney, to go to the state attorney and say, look, these are all the things that were originally there. I got my client to get them to everything. I'd like to reinstate or I'd like to, to term or I'd like to withdraw the warrant. And the reason I do it, folks, is because when you have a violation of probation, you are required to surrender, right? I mean, as an officer of court, I have to tell my clients, look, you, you, you should surrender. That's what you're supposed to do. But what happens when you surrender and you haven't done anything? You haven't done anything. Well, what do you think the likelihood of a positive result is? You're gonna go into custody, you get a court date in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, depending on the judge and the, the circuit. And then they gotta reset it because they're, they're gonna give you some terrible offer. You're sitting in custody. But if I could get some of these things done before then I usually ask, can I do an in-court surrender? And I, I ask probation if they have any objection. And then I call the state attorney that's assigned and see if they have any objection. And if they both don't have an objection, I file a notice of hearing for a violation and an in-court surrender. So my client doesn't have to go into custody, right? Because when you go into custody, you're in jail, the food's bad. Like it's not a good place, right? So I try my best to avoid that. It doesn't work every time, right? It's not like I'm 100 and 0, but it works a lot of the time. If you get everything done, so case I had recently, client had absconded, meaning he had left. He hadn't done anything. He had a warrant for a couple of years. He hired me. I contacted probation. I said, this is what my plan is. I'm going to try to get this done. Probation officer said, okay. I got the client to do those things. I sent them to probation. They said, okay, no problem. We won't object to the in-court surrender. I talked to the state attorney that's assigned and usually they change. So I got the state attorney. They said, okay, they were, they were willing to reinstate. And then ultimately they agreed to, you know what? Withdraw the warrant, withdraw the violation of probation and term is probation. So even though this person only did about four months of probation on a DUI from a few years ago, all of their conditions were met. Everything had been completed, minus the ignition interlock. But the caveat on the ignition interlock is they can't get a driver's license, the warrant's lifted, 
the probation is terminated, but they can't get a driver's license unless they have an ignition interlock. So the state knows that. So the state agreed. So this person dealt with this over their head, nervous, Nelly, of course, you know, what's going to happen? Am I going to go to jail? And I can't guarantee a result. All I can do is work hard. And that's what we're able to do. So they literally dismissed the KPS, the, the warrant. They dismissed the violations and they deemed him unsuccessfully. He unsuccessfully completed probation. And why was he unsuccessful? Well, the option was put him back on probation and let him finish out like the ignition interlock, which, you know, it's six months or so. Um, but that he can't get a driver's license anyway. So saying unsuccessful, here's how it harms him. And here's how I explained it to my client. I go, look, if you do this, if you're ever charged in the future with any crime, they're going to look at your prior criminal history and they're going to see that you had a DUI and that DUI you were terminated as unsuccessful. What does that mean for future prosecutors if you ever get charged again? It means you're probably not a good candidate for probation. So what is likely to be your offer? You're likely to get a jail or prison offer on something that you may be able to get probation on, but you're not as likely to get that. And the client said, look, I don't plan on getting in trouble. Go, no one plans on it. No one says, hey, you know what? 2024, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get arrested for something. No, no one thinks that way, right? Um, but he decided to do that as opposed to getting reinstated on probation, finishing out another eight months of probation. Um, he was termed unsuccessful, but he was done. Everything was completed except for the ignition interlock. So that's one of my strategies on dealing with violations of probation. If you're an attorney, you may do that. I, I don't know what other people do. Um, I see a lot of people just get turned themselves into the jail and then they end up waiting 30 to 45 days before they have a court date. Um, or coming to a negotiation, sometimes sooner than that, but you know, a lot of times they wait. And who wants to wait in jail? So again, doesn't happen in every situation, but I think it's a, an effective method um, to helping people with their violations of probation. So I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Hopefully you don't have a VOP. Hopefully you never need me, but if you do, you know where to find me. See ya.